Hello there, thank you for joining us on the show. I'm your host, Joy Labarai. Now, have you ever thought of going into agriculture? I'm sure you've not. 80% of Nigeria's citizens do not want to engage in anything called agriculture. That's because it's um, associated with people that are poor or peasants. And so we want um, a higher profession of job. But listen, there is more to agriculture than just family. So sit back and enjoy the ride with our guests on the show. I'm sure you are going to have a good time. Set with me is the face behind agricultural development in Lagos State. Believe me, she's tenacious and she's hardworking and passionate about making sure there is food security in Lagos State. Welcome on set, Abisona Ulusoya. Thank you very much for being on set with me. Thank you for having me on your show. Now tell us, um, since the pandemic started, how has Lagos State been coping in terms of food? So um, since the pandemic started, um, I believe Lagosians are well aware of the emergency food response um, initiative of Mr. Babaji Deolushola Songolu, okay. which we kick-started on the 27th of March 2020 to offer succor to Lagosians, the indigents, the poor, the vulnerable. And the idea back then was to at least offer food palliatives to a minimum of 200,000 households, oh, wow. meaning 1.2 million people. But so far till date, we have done over 500,000 households, giving them food items like gari, rice, beans, uh, tomato paste, and the likes. And um, I believe the way we have handled it has actually been more of a pioneer initiative okay. for Nigeria as a whole because Lagos State started it. And eventually it snowballed into the private sector also um, chipping in contributing, donating towards what we were doing under the vision of Mr. Babaji de Olushola Songodu. Um, I think we've been able to handle it because of our partnership with other states, okay. because of the belief of the private sector and well-meaning Lagosians and individuals generally across Nigeria with the vision the Lagos state government has towards um, offering this succor to our people. And um, I believe, generally speaking, we've been able to touch lives, not just the lives of those that we offer the palliatives to directly, but those that also worked towards getting those food items into Lagos, those that worked with us in producing these food items in Lagos, those that worked in the various value chains, the truck drivers, the logistics and service providers, the laborers. I mean, you have a whole gamut of people that worked with us uh, during this period and are still working with us and in essence we've been able to catalyze you know offer and make people have jobs yeah. so in a way it's uh, not just about the food aspects exactly. but also the job creation the wealth creation and then the re the ripple effect that it has created across all this entire value chain systems and for the people as well so how lagos has been able to handle it i can say it's only been by god's grace yeah. We were never perfect. We are still not perfect, but we learn day by day. And um, I just want to believe that God has been on our side. So I want to say that maybe that is actually the number one factor around how we've been able to handle it. You can say that. Now, um, looking at how the lockdown has also eased out and how we've handled it going forward or what our plans are. Our plans are around how we can mitigate the vulnerability of Lagos towards issues like this going forward meaning we need to have food reserves meaning we need to up our production levels because these are the areas where we find that yes we are extremely vulnerable and if such issues like this should come up again then we would be left in a worse state than and where we are now that lagos is a very very populated state. exactly lagos being over 22 million people the smallest landmass in nigeria the smallest agri labor force it means that we are in a position where if any pandemic should hit us again, we'll be worse off. You know, talking so, about the Agric Lagos yes. a few days ago, I was reading about um, progress that Lagos State have made. I saw the um, rice mill at Imota. Yes. I also saw the aqua farm at Badagri. Yes. Now, what are the significance of this uh, movement that the Lagos State governments have taken? 
being the most populous state, being the least agrarian state, it means obviously when you look at supply and demand for the various food items, there would always be huge deficits. Okay. If you look at rice, Lagos consumes over a million metric tons of finished rice, oh, wow. but That's we produce true. barely nothing. If you look at fish, Lagos requires over 400,000 metric tons of fish on an annual basis, but we produce less than 200,000. So what it means is there's always a gap in the supply chain that needs to be filled. And what that also means is that Lagos State, as a government, needs to create the enabling environment for would-be investors to come into the space to help us to fill this gap. So the idea around having a mortar rice mill is, yes, we don't have the land mass, but we can be the processing hub in Nigeria. Lagos State is the market for sub-Saharan Africa, so it only makes sense to have processing hubs, processing centers closest to the market. Then it means your logistics cost is lower and you are able to service your people faster. So it only makes economic sense to set up processing centers like the Imota Rice Mill here in Lagos. The aquaculture hubs or centers that you saw, let's say for instance in Badagri, yeah. it also only makes sense, Lagos being the aquatic city, Looking at the geography of Lagos, we are surrounded by water bodies. Yes. So it only makes sense that we should up our production levels when it comes to fish production. Okay. We import so much fish, but we have water all around us. So why can't we utilize these water bodies and, you know, um, drill it down to maximizing the potentials around it? So it's just a given that we'll look at the areas where we have competitive and comparative advantage and just try to, you know, exploit to full potential what we have before we even talk about how we can look at other areas and get these items into Lagos. So we need to maximize to full potential what we have first before we look outside. So we need to look within and that is the story around Imota. That is the story around trying to develop the aquatic um, uh, scene within Lagos. I've seen so many um, programs that you've done. I, mm -hmm. uh, I think I saw the one that happened last month, July. Yes. Um, now, what um, role does the youth have to play in terms of the moves made by the federal, um, the Lagos state government? Yes. To making sure that, okay, now we have food to eat. What yes. about employment? You cannot speak about agriculture and not talk about the youth okay. and not talk about the women. In most economies in the world, the women contribute a larger percentage of the labor force in agriculture. Right. So Lagos, the story is not any different. And I must say it again that if there's one leader that is passionate about getting women involved in the workforce, be it in agriculture or in any other sector, it is Mr. Babaji de Olushola Sonolu. Wow. That is why we call him the leader of he for she. Mm. So for the youth involvement in agriculture we need to understand that agriculture is that one sector where you can mop up unemployment to great levels agriculture is that one sector that 70 percent of nigeria's population they are agrarian if you go to the north a larger percentage of them are farmers yeah. in lagos state the story is a bit different because lagos is more urban yeah. more metropolitan more cosmopolitan but then how do we get the youth involved in agriculture we need that because that is the only way we can sustain and begin to ramp up on food production in nigeria and in lagos we have an aging agrarian workforce this agrarian workforce will die off it's a given but then who is going to produce the food that we are going to eat we are saying lagos is going to have a population explosion up to let's say 30 million 35 million within the next 10 wow. years who is going to feed these people if not the youth we have today getting involved in the agri sector currently even if you look at lagos as a whole 100 percent of the agrarian workforce 80 percent are smallholder farmers For about 14 percent or 15 percent will essentially be medium scale farmers and just about four or five percent will be commercial farmers now, the reason why we would have this sort of disaggregation and this unproportional sizes for the kind of production we want in Lagos is because the youth are also not involved. They do not see agriculture as a, I would have to use that word, not necessarily a mainstay. Okay. Agriculture is not sexy enough to them. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I just need to use Seriously, that word. But that's what it is. A lot of them want to get into the entertainment exactly. industry, into, you know, that is what looks exciting. That is what seems upbeat to them. Agriculture doesn't carry or doesn't have that face for them. And that is where we need to start to change the narrative that, see, agriculture in itself 
can do so much more than what you think it does. And that is the essence of why we need the youth involved in agriculture for the longevity, for the sustainability, and also for them to actually see that, see, there's a lot of money to be made in agriculture. Exactly. Agriculture only requires patience, it requires tenacity, it requires passion. But the monies to be made in agriculture are longer lasting than what you find obtainable in most other sectors. So it's a function of letting the youth see that and for us also to begin to showcase, to see or let people see the benefits of being in the agri space. And I believe we'll begin to change that narrative. Thank for you people. so much for all this you said, seriously. Yes. Our youths are actually focusing on other things besides agriculture. Yes. Yes. Now you heard that agriculture has more to offer than just farming. So sit back and let's take a short break now. We'll be right back. Now is the game show with our guest. I'm so sure she's ready. I think I'm ready. <laughs> All right, now we have um, nine questions. Okay. All you just need to do is to pick three numbers okay. out of these nine questions. So you have number one to number nine. Okay. So you start from giving me one number you want to choose. Okay. From there to two number and to the third number. Okay. I'll so pick six. Least five Nigerian actors you know. It has, so it doesn't have to be female or male. Yeah, it could no, be no, any. No, yeah. Okay, so I would say Ramsey Noir, mm -hmm. Rita Dominic, mm -hmm. Genevieve Naji, mm -hmm. um, 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 Mercy, hey, mm -hmm. ha, oh, Lord. Mercy, jo eh? Mercy Johnson, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll pick Yabojo. Mm. She's not just a commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll pick those five. She does, all right. Yes. That was great. That was great. All right. Question number... I'll pick um, number three. Number three. Number three says, what's the botanical name for Popo? Papaya. I don't know if there's something else after, but I know it's not papaya, so I'll stick to papaya. All that's right, what so, I know. Oh, that's that's um, like the half name. Half it's name. Okay, uh -huh. thank, thank you, you for schooling me. <laughs> okay. All right, so the last question. I'll then. pick number nine itself. Number nine. What type of music did you, do you listen to? Okay, so I like soft rock, new wow. metal. Wow. Yeah, some people might find that a bit um, um, uncharacteristic because I'm a very quiet person. But you'll be surprised that when I listen to rock music, I change completely. Can you sing for us, I should sing for you. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, my favorite rock band is uh, Linkin Park. Wow. And it's so sad that Chester Bennington is dead. And I try to listen to him every day because his, his, um, his um, personality kind of resonates with me. So you cry when you So sing. someone says he sings like an angel but screams like a demon. And um, my favorite song is um, In The End. So okay. if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, fair. so just the chorus. Okay. So I tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I tried too hard to lose it all. But in the end... It doesn't even matter. 100%. <laughs> that was wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much for, for being on set. Thank you very much for having me. All right, that's all we can take on Agribusiness Weekend today. Don't forget to follow us or you can visit our social media platforms or visit our website on www.corporatefarmers.tv. You can also follow us on Twitter, Agribusiness Weekend, or on Instagram, Agribusiness Weekend. Till I come your way next time, I'm Joy Baran. Bye for now.